Okay, this is problem eight actually from the textbook, that's why it looks the way that it does. But um, sometimes you will be asked to find the inverse that's defined only by a table of values or by a graph. They don't give you the function, they just give you this information and they start asking you questions about the inverse. So, let's look at part A. It says, suppose that assignments of the function f of x are shown, uh, are shown in the following table. Uh, make a similar table that shows the assignments made by the inverse. Then describe the domain and range of the original and the inverse. Okay, so let's look at this. We said that um, the inverse switches x and y values. So if on the original the y value is 2, then that means on the inverse, when the x value is 2, the y value will be negative 4. Okay? You switch the relationship there. If the y value uh, of the original is 2 and the x value is negative 4, then that flip flop, so the x value of the inverse is 2, the y value of the inverse is negative 4. Okay, so when the y value is 1, the x value is going to be negative 3. When the y value is 0, the x value is going to be, excuse me, when the, uh, the y value of the inverse is going to be negative 2. Get my words mixed up here. When the y value of the original is negative 1, then the y value of the inverse is going to be negative 1. There are other ways that you can fill in this table. This is just the way that makes sense to me. When the y value of the original is negative 2, the y value of the inverse is going to be 0. When the y value of the original is negative 3, the y value of the inverse is going to be 1. When the y value of the original is negative 4, the y value of the inverse is going to be 2. And we can't really do anything for those last two because we don't have enough information. Okay? We don't have enough So that's all that we can fill in. This looks like, if you look at this, this looks like an example of a function that is its own inverse. Okay? A function that is its own inverse because the y values of the original function are the same as the y values for the inverse. So this function is an example of a function that is its own inverse so technically we can fill in those last two blocks right there based on the trend that, uh, that we are seeing. Okay, uh, we're not going to talk about the domain and range because that's the book to talk about when you're just looking at the table. Okay, so the big thing is you switch x and y. You switch x and y. So let's look at this graph quickly. Uh, we've got a graph here. Now, that line going through the middle of it was not originally on the graph, but I put it on there for a reason that we'll talk about after we um, graph the inverse points here. So they give us just a whole bunch of random scattered points for the original function g of x. Let's graph its inverse. So the inverse switches x and y. So if I look at that very first point down there in the corner, Okay, negative 5, negative 3. The inverse is going to have the point negative 3, negative 5. The inverse will have the point negative 3, negative 5. X and Y switch places. Uh, then I see negative 2, negative 1. So the inverse is going to have negative 1, negative 2. Negative 4, 0 is going to be 0, negative 4 for the inverse. Negative 3, 1 is going to be 1, negative 3. 
Okay, I'm just switching the x and y coordinates here. Negative 1, 2 is going to be 2, negative 1. 0, 4 is going to be 4, 0. 2, 3 is going to be 3, 2. And 1, 5 is going to be 5, 1. Now that we have these points graphed, and we've got this line, this line is the line y equals x. Okay, it has a slope of 1, goes through the origin. This is the line y equals x. Do you see a graphical relationship between the original function and the inverse associated with that line? It's symmetric, right? It's like a mirror image. If you look along this line y equals x, if you kind of tilt your head to the side, so that y equals x is completely vertical, you can see that these points are mirror images of each other. So this is another relationship between functions and their inverses. Okay, um, The inverse is uh, the reflection across the line y equals x. So if we look at, um, for example, let's go back and mm, we'll look at one of these linear functions. Okay, if I grab 3x plus 5 and its inverse, I want you to see the relationship here. 3x plus 5 and it's inverse, x minus 5, notice I'm putting in parentheses, divided by 3, and if we look at the graph, now I didn't graph the line y equals x because it would be a little bit of uh, You can kind of see it, I am actually going to graph the line y equals x. Um, so you can see this, and I don't know if y'all know this, but you can move your arrow key all the way over to the left, and you can press enter, and like I can make that a thick line, or I can, that's shading. Uh, I want to make it a dashed line. There we go. I want to make it a dashed line. And I'm going to make my window square so that the symmetry looks a little bit better. Okay, so there's the original function that's inverse. There's the line y equals x. It doesn't look very dominant, but it does look a little different. Uh, you can see the symmetry here. You can see that how they are mirror images of each other. So that's another way of checking whether a function um, is an inverse. Uh, and we can look at, we can compare some values on the table and see that inverse relationship as well. So there are about three different ways that we can talk about inverses. We can talk about their equations, we can look at their tables, and we can look at their graphs. You need to understand those three different relationships, their relationships for inverses. Alright, um, let's look at these real quick, just a little review, okay, does graph number one here, does it have an inverse, or is its inverse a function, is a better way of phrasing that question, will the inverse of that be a function? Yes, it will be, okay, because every y value has only one x value. Um, if, to test if something is a function, we use the vertical line test. To test if its inverse will be a function, you can use the horizontal line test to check. Um, so to check if a function's inverse will be a function. Okay. A function can have an inverse that is not a function itself. It can fail the vertical line test, but it can still have an inverse. Okay, so to check if a function's inverse will be a function, use the horizontal line test. <clears throat> on the original function. So we're looking at the original function here. Um, if we use the horizontal line test, it only catches the graph at one point at all times. So this is, uh, what type of function is this? 
25 to the x minus 4. What do we call that? What, what do we call it when the variable is the exponent? It's related to the word exponent. Exponential. This is an exponential function. Okay, most exponential functions look like this. They're either decreasing or we can have them increasing, but they have that same general shape. So exponential functions have inverses that are functions. Now this second graph here is sine of x. This is a trig function. This is what it looks like. This is a portion of the graph. It actually is what we call a periodic function. It continues to repeat this pattern forever. So this function um, is inverse. It has an inverse, but its inverse is not a function unless we restrict its domain. Okay. So for the first one, the inverse is a function. For the second one, uh, the inverse is not a function. Unless we restrict it in it. Um, and then 